Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Trinity Sunday, the Sunday after Pentecost, when we celebrate the Trinity of God. And this is also Memorial Day weekend. We remember all those who have died in war for our country. We give thanks for their service. And we also lift a prayer for peace with justice that will keep us from war. And that is how the Decoration Day, which became Memorial Day, and that we now remember all our, our dead from wars and their service. We, we continue that prayer for peace that we will not have to lose people in war. Today is with that in United Methodist Church. Today is Peace with Justice Sunday, and we share a special offering to work for justice in the world. One half staying in Ohio and the other half going to the rest of the world to serve in the loving way of God. Several announcements in the bulletin, um, but before that, I want to just say a word of welcome to all of you, and a welcome, word of welcome to any guests today. And we're, we're glad you're here. We're glad also for those who are joining us through Facebook Live and YouTube. And we'd like to connect with you and be connected, because that's what God calls us to do, to connect in love, we have a connect card where you can write down any prayers that you might have and encourage you if you want us to share those with the congregation to check the box and we'll, we'll pass those on to our congregation. There are also other ways to get involved and, or ask for some pastoral support through that. So please uh, fill those out each week, either online or in person. We are shifting to summer hours and we are, that becomes because, you know, it's Summer is about almost here. Many schools are ending. This last week, some classes ended. Next week, some classes ended. We have graduations, and next Sunday, we will celebrate graduation with uh, all of our high school, college, and graduate school graduates. So we want to, to do that next Sunday. That will also be a, a Sunday for Holy Communion. The first Sunday of each month, we share Holy Communion as well. Senior singles will gather on Tuesday for lunch. They're meeting at Nick's American Cafe. And then Tuesday night, we have a grounds uh, service group that's gathering. If you want to serve on the grounds here, meet with the team that kind of coordinates that. We'll gather at 7 o'clock and uh, kind of figure out some more things for the summer. We give thanks for all those who work on the grounds. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, with the plantings and flowers that we, we see out there. So give thanks for all the work that people give, that service. Um, you'll see other ways to sign up and get involved. And Dream is going to be outside after the service signing up people for a training for AED and CPR. And you may say, well, I don't need that. I'm not worried about that. Well, it, it's not for yourself, really. It, it's for someone else if they have an emergency. And so we encourage you to sign up for that. And to, that training will be on Saturday, June 8th, from 10 to 12. And then you'll know what to do with the AED that we have out here between both our, our places of worship. Um, you'll be able to help someone. Uh, you'll be able to administer CPR. Good things. Also, we need help in June because we have Camp S'mores, our Vacation Bible School version. And uh, let's see if I can say it now, but I practiced in the first service. Uh, Friday Family Fun Fiesta Night. Um, got there. So that is coming up at the end of our Camp S'mores week. And then Summer Blast is going on Wednesdays in June from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for children grades 2 through 5. Now, if you have somebody, a neighbor or a grandchild or son or daughter, child that you want to uh, enroll, you can do that online, but you can, if you're, if you're not comfortable with that, you can grab a form, a paper form out there and use that. Also, you may notice a table with, with some Monfort Heights wear, spirit wear out there. We have sweaters and shirts, uh, all genders covered and hats. So if you want to grab something to represent Monfort Heights in the community around, we encourage you to do that as well. We'll we're signing up, taking orders now, and then we'll place a big order for you to do that. Um, that's enough of announcements. I will say this, though. I, I'm feeling good. I wasn't yesterday because 
Jeff and Elevate Youth hosted a lock-in. And we had, they, they were great. Um, 16 youth gathered, and there were um, seven uh, younger youth, no, I mean adults who were with, with there. And Jeff said it was good practice for upcoming parenthood. Um, <laughs> And uh, going sleepless, uh, I took a nap yesterday. I needed one big time. Well, and let me just, let me thank Pastor Paul and Christy and Sharon. They were there all night. Paul got a couple hours of sleep. I think they dozed, Christy and Sharon dozed off a little bit, but pretty much stayed up all night with a bunch of teenagers. So uh, can we give it up for them? Uh, yes. And, and we had Melinda Taylor in there too, and yeah. Jake and... Uh, Riley, they're, they're always there, faithful uh, former youth members who now serve on the team. And uh, if you're called to serve in any way, that's always part of our message. If you're called to serve God in some way, we invite you to come forward to, to share that with us so we can get you involved in service because that's what it's about. Well, I invite you to, to stand as you are able now and to join in the call to worship. God, sometimes we show up to worship ready to encounter your presence. You're always with us. Sometimes we catch glimpses of you at home, work or school, in a smile, in a gentle breeze, in the joy of being together. We know you are always with us. But God, we hesitate to encounter you in all your glory, afraid to be overwhelmed by your love and holiness. And yet we know you are always with us in the fullness of your glory. Ready our hearts today to encounter more of your glory, your love, holiness, and glory that is always present with us. We come today to enter the dance of the all-consuming presence of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so this first song is, uh, is a new one this morning called Rise, and it is just about seeking God's presence, the living water of God's spirit to give us renewal and strength and to rise up in, in love. Uh, and so that's what the song is about this morning, and it's called Rise. Promises are true, you're faithful. You cover all my sins, forgiveness. My eyes have seen your ways, your goodness. Love and faithfulness me, we behold your glory. Righteousness and peace, kiss heavens all around us. Spring up, oh well, living water rise within us. Spring up, oh well, Holy Spirit deep within us. Rise, rise. Rise, your love will never fail, your steadfast, your promises are true, your faithful, you cover all my sins with forgiveness. Eyes have seen your ways, your goodness, love and faithfulness. Me, we behold your glory, righteousness and peace. Kiss heaven. 
Springs all around us spring up. Oh, well, living water rise within us. Spring up. Oh, well, Holy Spirit deep within us. Rise. Rise. goodness in the land of the living. We see your goodness in the land of the living. We see your goodness in the land of the living. We see your goodness in the land of the living. Spring up, oh well, living water rise within us. Spring up, oh well, Holy Spirit deep within us. Rise, rise. start. She's she's spending time with you. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. We all have those days where we just want to play. <laughs> all right. So, I have this situation I'm in. All right. And in this situation, I have this friend and everywhere I go, they go too. I feel like they're like reading my mind all the time, like I have a thought I just, you know, like when I get sad, they get sad. It's just, I don't know. Have you ever, ever been in that situation? You think they're copycatting me? Yeah, I would be someone I would want to copycat. <laughs> 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 Who got that? Um, you think so? Have you ever had that? Your sister? Yeah. But that's because you're the oldest. That's a big job. They're going to follow you around a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's because they look up to you, right? Yeah, 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 but you're setting the example, right? That's a big job. That's a really big job being the oldest sibling. Um, now, I bet, I bet, though, you have other friends, you have friends that maybe follow you around sometimes? No? Do you, do you want to bet, like, five bucks on it? Oh, wait, we're Methodists. We're not, we're not betting. <laughs> Uh, I, I, what, what? No gambling. Yeah. In a line for school. Yeah, that's a time you have to kind of do that, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think there's someone um, with you following you all around all the time, too. 
It's, this, it's probably the same friend. You know my friend? You know my friend's name? No. No. Emmanuel. Have you, have you met Emmanuel? I bet you have. You know why? You have. Because Emmanuel is another name for God. Jesus. Oh, I know. Both services. You've got it before me. Um, you ruined my mojo. <laughs> yeah, Emmanuel means God with us. It's another name for God. And so it kind of changes that perspective, right? When it's God who's following us around and God who knows our thoughts and God who's with us when we're sad and God who's with us when we're happy, right? Emmanuel, all of a sudden, that's a pretty cool friend to have, right? Well, he is, I'm telling you, he's a fun friend. Yeah, he's with me in some of the hardest times. Yeah, when other friends aren't so much. He is a very good friend, yeah. He's with me always, right? Because he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Now, we normally don't talk about, we don't call him that, right? Right? What if from now on out, I would probably not even be able to do it, but like, what if I just got up here and said, Emmanuel loves you every Sunday? They want, well, I'll just have to keep reminding him, it's God with us. Right? God loves us. Oh, okay. Well, we normally use Emmanuel when? At Christmas time, right? Right? That's when we hear it. But guess what? Emmanuel's not just with us at Christmas. Thank goodness for that, right? He's with us. He's with us all the time, everywhere. And so I want us to remember that, that our friend God is always present with us in good times and bad, right? Now, um, I did find a song. It's by Lauren Daigle. Do you know who she is? Yeah, she's a Christian artist. And it is a Christmas song. It's called Light of the World. Yeah, you can, you can read along with me. But it's going to be our prayer today. Do you want to read it to them, or do you want me to read it? You want to read it? Okay. Maddie's going to lead us in prayer today, everyone. Here we go. Dear God, the world waits for a miracle that heart all. For the little bit of hope, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. A child prays for the peace on earth when she comes out from the issue of her heart. Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. For all who hunger, for all who pray, for all who wonder, behold your king. Behold, Messiah, Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Good job. I invite you now to to pray with me. Gracious God, we are here in your presence. We've gathered to worship you, to praise you, and to serve you. Help us to grow in awareness of your presence wherever we go. And help us to seek to be like you in your love. In your name we pray. O Holy One, three in one. Amen. Isaiah is our first text, and it's Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. And this is a story of Isaiah experiencing God's presence. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty. And the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. 
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this is touched, your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. The second reading for today is from John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 17. We're all familiar with 316, right? This is where that comes from. It's the story of Nicodemus, a leader, a Jewish leader and teacher, and with Jesus. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here ends the reading of the word. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Isaiah was overwhelmed with an experience of the presence of God. That story that we just heard, that first reading, was where he was seeing God.
God and everything around God as God was being worshipped with smoke filling the air. And his response was to be filled with terror. Terror. And wonder. One commentator writes that they think that Isaiah was experiencing terror not for fear of how God would deal with them, with Isaiah, but with terror realizing the enormity of God's love and compassion for all of God's creation. And seeing that and knowing himself how he felt towards other people and other things in the creation moved him to feel unworthy. And he responded, you know, I'm unworthy. And that's when this vision, in this vision that he has, the seraph brings the hot coal to his lips. And then he has the ability to hear God's voice. And he responds, this is the writing. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Isaiah was consumed with the presence of God. When have you been consumed with the presence of God? When has your life been taken over by a vision of God? I remember my dad when he told us about an experience on a retreat. Now, he grew up in the church from birth on. He went on lots of retreats. He became a pastor, but this was later on. I don't know, 50s or 60s. But I remember him telling the whole family gathered around him, you know, and, and he would pontificate. You know, we would all gather around and listen to our dad. Grandchildren, everybody's there. And he was talking about how in the middle of the night at this retreat, the retreat had been focusing on God's love and God's grace and call to serve. But he said he woke up in the middle of the night and he just said the whole room was filled with the presence of God. He said it was indescribable, and yet he was, here he was telling us about it. And it brought him so much joy. He had this feeling of an immense joy, an immense feeling of being loved and being fully known. Known fully. Like Miss Kelly was saying, following you everywhere you go, knowing every thought. And it brought him that fullness. And he was overwhelmed. And he said, I just started crying. I just started crying like a baby. And whenever he would talk about it with us, which he did several times, he, he would start crying again because he was there. He was there experiencing that presence of God. Whenever he would preach about it, same thing. He, there would be tears. This past Friday was the anniversary of John Wesley's Aldersgate experience. Now, John Wesley, you know, gave birth to Methodism and this way of being in small groups and trying to study scripture and trying to serve the poor and trying to practice the presence of God and trying to, to live more fully the love of God. He was already doing that. He, he went to a society meeting and this is what he wrote in his journal after being there. In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street. I didn't want to go, okay? <laughs> Where one was reading Luther's preface. Luther, Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. Well, many have written about this experience. He, he wrote about it, talked about it. And 
he, just remember, Wesley, I don't go back with Wesley. Wesley was not successful at the beginning in his ministry. He was one of 19 kids, child of an Anglican priest. Um, when he came to the Americas, he pretty much failed. He was down in Georgia, uh, brought to be uh, a missionary to Native Americans, and then the, the Anglicans who were there. He didn't do well. He actually got sent home because he was not really appropriate with some parishioners. They sent him back to England. It was a rough beginning for him. And he wondered, you know, what do I do? And, and he, as he continued in this way of building societies, this, this experience kind of led him to go deeper in that love of God, to realize that that love is there perfecting him, bringing him more towards love. So some have said that, that Wesley, prior to this experience, maybe did more of his service out of duty and responsibility, going through the motions that as he lived into this love of God, he served more and more in the love of God and the presence of God. Well, Nicodemus, the other person that we heard about today, an older man, a Pharisee who went to Jesus in the middle of the night, maybe because he couldn't sleep, because he was just trying to figure all this out. How does this person from Galilee who's not been in Jerusalem come in with all this and following and doing these signs? He was overwhelmed with how Jesus showed the presence of God. And maybe Nicodemus came at night because he didn't want to be seen that he was going to Jesus being a Pharisee, but Jesus responds to his queries with saying that the presence comes from God above, from the Holy Spirit of God. I mean, and Nicodemus says you, you wouldn't be able to do these things you're doing if you didn't have the presence of God. He, he recognizes that. And Jesus teaches him that this is from above. It's not from earth, it's from above. It's from God's love. And Jesus tells Nicodemus and Jesus tells us that this love of God is willing to allow God to die in order for us to know that all are loved. And that this love is not a love of condemnation, but a love that saves. I'm going to back up again. You know, that, that, that verse 316, 317, God comes to bring love and 17 is very clear, not to condemn, not to condemn, but to save, a love that saves. You know, many of our brothers and sisters in the church are consumed with the idea of a God who condemns. They live in fear of that, terror of being condemned, and of God condemning others. And they go from community to community telling groups of people that they are not loved by God. This is not the love of God. That is not the love of God. We are not here as the church to tell people that they're going to be consumed by God's condemnation. That's not it. God comes to save, to love. Jesus is clear that the presence of God does consume us and calls us to serve out of love to save the world. So how can we get it right? How can we ever be as loving as God? When we look at this kind of love, all of us must stop like Isaiah I mean, if you, if you look at that kind of love that wants to save all, that, wants to, that is present with each of us each moment of every day, that's a love that does... That, how, how is there that much love? Because I know how I am every day, and my responses sometimes are, are not loving. Let's, 
I mean, think about your own lives. Don't you respond sometimes without love? <laughs> and you get really frustrated, you, whether it's news or a neighbor or a family member or yourself. And you respond just like Isaiah. I am a human of unclean lips. Help me in my unbelief. As we look at that all-consuming love. God's love is so consuming if we engage in the presence that we want to serve out of love. That's what happens with Isaiah. That's, that's what Jesus was calling us to. That's what the disciples, the, all the women and children and youth, men, all of the humans and people who have followed. You know, I've experienced this presence. I've seen it. In God's creation, I've seen the awe and the love. In Jesus, his life and teachings for peace and for inclusion, his death and resurrection, I've seen the awe and the love. In the Holy Spirit, how she fills my breath and mind and heart and body with love. I've seen that all and that love. But somehow, on a daily basis, and I've got some family here, <laughs> they can witness to it, I forget the vision of God. I forget. So, I am named after a bishop. You know, that's, that's a lot to put on a kid um, in the United Methodist Church, but I was my middle name is Cushman. I was named for Bishop Ralph Cushman. He was a bishop in Minnesota. You probably haven't heard of him. In the, the first half of the 20th century. So he died in the year before I was born. Now, my mom heard him preach. And I think he was the bishop who preached that, you know, kind of, caused her to change her major and to, to go more into service within the church. Um, I ended up with his last name as my middle name, I think, probably because he died in 1960 and I was born the next year and my mom wanted me to, to carry that name. Well, he wrote a book, and I have that book still, whose title sums up our call as Christians. And really our topic today, this all-consuming presence. And the book he wrote is called The Practicing the Presence of God. Practicing the Presence of God. You and I are called to practice the presence of God of love every day. Think about that. We're called to practice that. And this God is much bigger, much bigger than any love that you and I can really con consider in any way. And with this being Trinity Sunday, I just want to say aside that, or as part of this, that we, we can't really completely define God through just Jesus, because we don't. We understand God as a holy mystery. And yes, we can fully know God through Jesus, but even beyond that, we understand God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. It, it's a mystery, it's beyond what we can fully comprehend. This presence is beyond us, and yet somehow it is personal. It is personal, and that's why you're here. That's why I'm here, because it is personal, and communal. The good news is that through Jesus, we believe that God is in every life, following us all around, and that God is calling on every one of us to serve out of love. Are you willing? Are you brave enough? Are you faithful enough to seek to practice the presence of God every day?
Isaiah said, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Send you. It's possible. It's possible. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come this day aware that you are with us, that you are in our midst, that every breath you are there. Help us to practice your presence and help our lives to be like yours. Help your love to just continue to consume us, that it will push out all condemnation and bring in your spirit, your Holy Spirit of love, of kindness, of forgiveness, of reconciliation, of restoration. Now we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to stand with us if you were able this morning. As we continue in worship, we respond together through song. We sing, Holy, Holy, Holy.
creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we hear Christ being back we're the whole earth echoing his eminence his name would burst from sea and sky from I send you out now aware that God's presence is with you. And I want you to go out and seek that love and be aware of that love wherever you go. May you practice that love yourself. May you say, Lord, here I am, send me. Go in peace to practice the love of God. Amen. Jason, do we have to do chairs?